Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Tuesday, June 6th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Apple kicked off its week-long Worldwide Developers Conference, known as WWDC, on Monday. The highlight was the introduction of a new augmented reality headset, the Vision Pro. CEO Tim Cook said the product had been years in the making. I believe that augmented reality is a profound technology. Blending digital content with the real world can unlock experiences like nothing we've ever seen. So today, I'm excited to announce an entirely new AR platform with a revolutionary new product. We discussed Apple's headset plans on the show before. It's a device that breaks a lot of the company's traditional rules for new launches. But its debut at the developers' conference follows a script Apple has used before, getting app makers on board. With me to discuss this is WSJ's personal tech news editor, Shara Tipkin. So, Shara, let's start with this big news about the Apple headset, the Vision Pro. Can you just describe it a bit for us? It basically looks like ski goggles that sits on top of your eyes. The glass that goes in front of your eyes can either be clear so people around you can see your eyes or it's kind of fogged so you're a little more isolated from the outside world. And it has a strap around the back of the head. So basically it looks like very sleek, very fancy ski goggles that then let you see images on top of the real world. So maybe it's watching a movie or um, having a FaceTime call with your colleagues or watching videos of your children. How do you use it? I mean, other than putting it on your head, if I want to use one of the apps in the headset, Do I need anything else? You basically are accessing all of your apps right there in the headset. So things that Apple showed was FaceTime. So you could have a FaceTime call with your colleagues and they would appear life-size in your room. You could shoot 3D video of your kids and basically kind of relive that moment. If you have a panoramic photo, it will be huge and kind of immersive and you'll feel like you're back in that place, like you're in the mountains again or whatever it is. You can use this for work. You can use this personally. You can game with it. Apple's basically showing that anything that you would do with your other devices, you can do with this one product on top of your face. You don't need another screen, but if you have your other screens, they can also work alongside it. So your Mac or your iPhone or whatever other Apple products you use. One of the things that stood out to me watching this was that you didn't need controllers or anything in your hands to move around the space to open up a new app. How big of a a game changer is that? That has actually been a really hard thing to solve, specifically in virtual reality, which is kind of awareness of the person who's actually using that product. So what Apple is doing is basically your eyes are the controllers. So when you look at something, it will open that app. Or if you navigate to a search bar, you can then use your fingers to select it. So it's using a combination of your eyes and your hands and also your voice to control this device. So Apple has this new chip inside the Vision Pro that is basically just sensing everything in the environment. So that's kind of the way that they're approaching this. So you don't need any weird controllers that you have to learn how to hold correctly and use. It's really just yourself. And they said the effect is it almost feels like it's reading your mind because where you're looking is what it's responding to. Okay, the next stage of technology, I suppose. If somebody wants one of these headsets, when and where can they get it? It's going to be not cheap. So this will be about $3,500. It's going to be available early next year in some markets, including the U.S. So really, Apple introduced this right now at WWDC because it wants developers to start making apps for it. So when this goes on sale, they want a full catalog of things that we'll be able to do. So it's not just Apple's own products on there. That's kind of why they're giving this kind of big lead time between when they announce it and when it actually goes on sale. How important is that for Apple, getting these other developers excited about the headset? It's really important. Um, If you've looked at the iPhone's trajectory, all of its success really came because Apple introduced an app store. 
when the iPhone first came out, I don't think a lot of people remember, there wasn't actually an app store. So it was really limited in terms of what you could do on the iPhone. Now, you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of apps that you can choose from. And that's really kind of what has made the iPhone this really popular, rich experience. You know, just a few days ago, Meta announced it was bringing out an updated version of its VR headset. So tell us, what is Apple's competition in this space like? One thing that Apple kind of has going for it is it waits a while to get into some markets. And what it comes out with is usually kind of a very polished, finished product. I think we'll probably see Apple's competitors react to this, you know, in their future products as well, figure out what they're going to change. It's really notable that Apple decided to do augmented reality as its first focus. You know, a lot of times we've really seen virtual reality and gaming kind of be the big thing that people really push. Gaming is a part of this, but it's not the only part of this. It's communication, it's entertainment, it's work, it's home. Apple kind of divided its presentation among these kind of different areas. So, you know, it's trying to kind of be the everything device and what it sees is the future of computing. Shara, Disney is partnering with Apple to supply content for this new platform rather than working with another tech company or even trying to develop something themselves. But Disney and Apple are competitors in the streaming space, and Disney is partnering with them anyway. So what does this tell us? Apple and Disney are competitors, but they've also been very close as two companies. Steve Jobs invested in Disney. The two companies have long been close. And the reality is, yes, they compete in streaming, but Disney needs to be in front of customers wherever they are. And lots of people have iPhones. Lots of people have iPads. So even though they may be competing in terms of streaming, they also have to partner in other areas. And it's really important for both of those companies to have the content and to have the devices and be where customers want them to be. All right, let's talk about some non-headset-related news out of WWDC. What else was announced on Monday? You know, along with, like, the headset, Apple had some interesting features for iOS 17, like live voicemail transcriptions. You can finally set multiple timers they showed off with the iPad, which is something that's been lacking for a long time. You can send sort of live updates of where you are, so people in the Messages app will be able to see if you're home If you are trying to call someone on FaceTime and they don't answer, you can leave a message. So, you know, there's a bunch of new features that are things that we are all going to be using this fall, basically. The new headset is something that is probably out of reach for most people to buy right away. So it's some of these other little features that maybe, you know, may not be as kind of gee whiz as the headset, but are things that are actually going to be more applicable to our lives. All right, that was our personal tech news editor, Shara Tipkin. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.